Okay, so this is an update on the boost pack. And I have not had an update video on this for a while because back in the beginning of 2014, I sold this car and I've gone to a fully electric car. So stay tuned for a video in the future uh, with an overview in that car. I've been very happy with the all electric car as my full-time commuter car. But uh, I sold this car to a guy and uh, he had it here today and I asked him if I could shoot a video and do some of the tests that I've had in the comments on my previous video. There's been just a ton of good questions and comments and one of the questions that a lot of people asked, they wanted me to disconnect the uh, spark plugs and try cranking it and see how long the engine would crank with the spark plugs electrically disconnected. So we'll go ahead and do that test now and uh, see how that turns out. Okay, so I think that was an excellent uh, test, and it actually cranked the engine over, you know, a lot longer than I was anticipating. So, very interesting. Uh, thanks to all the people that requested I do that. Uh, you can see that there was plenty of res, you know, reserve power in a system like this to go ahead and uh, start and crank your car up. Um, no issue there. So, like I said earlier, I ran this car for over a year with this uh, boost pack and uh, had minimal issues. You know, when I coupled it with the 2.5 watt solar panel in the dash, it just worked great. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, another question that came up a lot in the previous video on the boost pack was how do I charge the boost packs? A lot of times I'll just use my power supply. Um, I'll use a traditional 12 volt battery charger. In this case, I'm just going to use a regular 12 volt car battery. And um, thanks to the fact that this is a capacitor, it actually charges up very quickly. So you just connect it up like that and leave it for a little bit and you'll be charged right up. And of course, if you had the uh, solar panel in your dash, uh, that would continue to charge it up, keep it topped off as well. So anyway. Okay, so what we have for this test is the mini boost pack. And uh, this is one I also ran in my car for quite some time. And then I also tested it in a hybrid configuration with a lithium iron phosphate battery. I can't stress that enough. In reading the comments on this particular video over and over again, I saw people thinking that I was using a LiPo battery. Lithium iron phosphate. It's much safer. Make sure you check into that. Anyway, in this configuration, it's just the uh, six uh, boost caps. So it's just the small uh, super capacitor battery pack. I've got uh, the spark plugs electrically disconnected. They are uh, mounted in the car as normal, but they're just electrically disconnected. So we'll do a turnover test on this one and see how long it will crank the car before uh, it runs out on the mini boost pack. Hey, one other thing, I do read the comments. Notice this time, no wedding ring. That was a good observation, guys. Thanks for the uh, safety tip. And uh, yeah, let's go for it. There you go. So you can see that the mini boost pack can turn over the car just fine for, you know, three, four seconds and tapers off quite quickly. And that's the reason uh, we piggybacked it up with the uh, other battery pack just to keep it topped up all the time. It can deliver plenty of cranking apps, as you saw initially, but doesn't have the reserve power. Now, it would charge faster with a solar panel or something. This could probably be an excellent little pack to put on a four-wheeler or something with a small solar panel as a starter pack and just uh, let the sun keep it topped off. And it's also great for a lightweight um, car where you want to reduce weight. Maybe you're into drag racing and you want to reduce uh, your quarter mile time and every bit of weight counts. Those type of applications, uh, this pack works great. With a hybrid system, this could uh, just be the only thing you would need. I did run the car for a good long time uh, with the hybrid lithium iron phosphate small battery here plus boost pack. So. 
Okay, so I've got these spark plugs uh, reconnected, and uh, I want to finish this video off with a startup with just the mini boost pack. To me, that is still a super impressive demonstration of supercapacitor technology. The fact that this little lightweight tiny pack can start this car right up to me is just amazing. And uh, had a lot of fun with this, uh, experimenting with this stuff when I owned this car, and I'm really enjoying the all-electric car, and like I said, continue to follow along for an update on that uh, coming out soon. But yeah, let's go ahead and just do a startup on this, and uh, see how that mini boost pack, working all alone, works uh, to start this car. So that right there is incredibly impressive to me. And uh, you know, you never know what you'll discover when you're experimenting, trying out new things. Lots of people said on the comments on this uh, previous video that this was fake. I take that as a compliment. It just shows that it's an amazing demonstration of supercapacitor technology. And uh, yeah, don't know what else to say about these supercapacitor boost packs. I'm going to continue to experiment with them uh, for solar applications, but anyway. So I'll keep experimenting. So, before we wrap up on the video, I thought I'd bring uh, Jensen out here. He was working inside the shop, and he's actually never seen the Mini Boost Pack in operation. Hey Jensen, what do you think? You think that can start this car up? Uh, I know you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Pretty impressive, right, if it starts it up? Pretty cool, it's great for uh, weight reduction in the yeah, car. Definitely. If you're into drag racing or something, this weighs about two pounds. 